The fading affect bias, also known as the FAB, is a psychological phenomenon in which negative affect fades faster than positive affect. This helps to attain a positivity bias which allows the individual to maintain a positive outlook on life. The FAB is positively related to healthy variables such as rehearsal and self-esteem, and negatively related to unhealthy variables such as negative PNS, depression, anxiety, stress, and so on. The FAB has been examined across a variety of event types such as alcohol, video games, COVID, social media, death, eating disorders, political events, and relationships. The goal of the current study is to examine the FAB and its relation to marijuana and non-marijuana events, and to assess its relationship with marijuana use, rehearsal, depression, anxiety, and stress. Marijuana consumption and overgeneral memory combine to negatively predict FAB. The current study examined the FAB across marijuana and non-marijuana events and its relation with marijuana use, depression, anxiety, and stress. In the current study, it was hypothesized that FAB for marijuana and non-marijuana events was expected. The FAB relation to marijuana consumption was expected. And the relation of FAB to consumption and addiction was expected to differ across event types. The current study had 80 participants, both male and female, from 18 to 24 years old. Some of these participants were students seeking research credit. The study, including a demographics questionnaire, self-rated typical week of marijuana usage, the GRIT scale, Pittsburgh sleep scale, DASS 21, PANIS, Big Five personality questionnaire, and self-reported events. The first step in our procedure is to obtain informed consent from all of our participants. We do this by giving them a form to fill out with information on the experiment. Secondly, we give them the demographics questionnaire so that we can better understand who our participants are and interpret the data accordingly. Our third step is to give out questionnaires such as the Big Five personality test. We do this so that we can get as many variables as possible when we review the data and interpret it. Our fourth step is to ask each of our participants to recall and write down two pleasant and unpleasant events related to marijuana, as well as two pleasant and unpleasant events unrelated to marijuana. This is the start of our experiment. Our fifth step was rating the event on a scale of negative three to three. We told the participants that a negative 3 meant the event was extremely unpleasant and a 3 was extremely pleasant. After that, our sixth step is to ask the participants how often each of these events occurred from a scale from 0 to 6. Lastly, we debrief the participants to make sure that they are mentally and physically healthy after the experiment and give them resources if they are not. Figure 1 shows a two-way interaction between fading affect bias across highness. On the x-axis, we show the degree of highness from the 10th percentile all the way to the 90th percentile. On the y-axis, we show the fading affect from 0 to 2. We see an increase in unpleasant events and a decrease in pleasant events. The difference between both of these show the fading affect bias. Here in this graph, we see an increase in the fading affect bias. Figure 2 shows the fading affect bias across average competence. On the x-axis, we see quintiles, and on the y-axis, we see the fading affect, and we show another increase in the fading affect bias towards the 90th percentile of competence. Figure 3, we show yet another two-way interaction of the fading affect bias across rehearsal. As the percentile of rehearsal increases, we also see the fading affect also increase. Therefore, the fading affect bias does show an increase over, over the percentiles. Figure 4 shows another two-way interaction, FAB across average neuroticism, from the 10th percentile all the way to the 90th percentile. Here, we actually see fading affect bias decrease over time. Unpleasant events decrease and pleasant events increase, therefore showing a decreased fading affect bias. Figure 5 shows the fading affect bias across negative panis. Here, we, here again on the x-axis we see the quintiles of negative panis, and on the y-axis we show the fading affect. Here we see unpleasant events are fading less while pleasant events are fading more so, showing a decreased fading affect bias. Figure 6, we see fading affect bias across average depression. We see the same trend as we saw in Figure 5 with a decreased fading affect bias. 
Figure 7. Fading affect bias across anxiety. Yet another two-way interaction that shows a decrease in the fading affect bias as the quintiles of anxiety increase. Figure 8. We show fading affect bias across stress, showing another trend of a decreasing fading affect bias as the quintiles increase. And last two-way interaction, fading affect bias across sleep disturbance. We show another trend of fading affect bias decreasing as we approach the 90th percentile of problematic sleepers. So the overall results in the two-way interactions were that healthy variables and rehearsal positively predict the FAB. That unhealthy variables such as depression, negative panis, anxiety, stress, poor sleep, and high marijuana consumption negatively predict the FAB. And this finding is very consistent with past FAB research. Figure 10 shows the FAB of marijuana and non-marijuana events mediated by rehearsal across quintiles of highness. On the x-axis, we show the quintiles of degree of highness per day, from the 10th percentile to the 90th percentile. On the y-axis, we have the fading affect from 0 to 2. Here, this is deferred by event type and mediated by rehearsal. We see an increase in the fitting affect bias of marijuana events, yet a fairly stable non-marijuana events. Figure 11 shows the FAB of marijuana and non-marijuana events mediated by sessions across quintiles of sessions. On the x-axis, we have quintiles of sessions per day, and on the y-axis, we have fitting affect. Here, we see marijuana events are also increasing fading and fading affect, yet non-marijuana events showing fairly stable actions. Figure 12, the fading affect bias of marijuana and non-marijuana events mediated by hours high across quintiles of hours high. On the x-axis, we have the quintiles of number of hours high per day from the 10th percentile all the way to the 90th percentile. We see the fading affect on the y-axis from 0 to 2, and we see an increase in non-marijuana events for fading affect bias and a fairly stable marijuana events. For the three-way interactions, we found the rehearsal fully or partially, depending on the variable mediated, the three-way interactions. Um, we found that thinking about these events, which is rehearsal, so sharing them likely enhances the FAB for high marijuana consumers for marijuana events and as it does for low marijuana consumers rating non-marijuana events. And this supports contentions about the FAB maintaining unhealthy behaviors like marijuana and alcohol consumption because frequent users forget how bad it made them feel and they keep going back. At low levels of consumption, the FAB is lower for marijuana events than non-marijuana events meaning that low levels of consumption, negative emotions relating to non-marijuana events will hood faster than negative emotions relating to marijuana events, and the FAB was larger for marijuana events at high levels of consumption, meaning that frequent marijuana users will have a high FAB for marijuana events, which indicates that they could go back um, to those behaviors that are causing them harm. Future research could look at marijuana use in a diary study to determine if smaller events can predict the FAB, and future research could also look at um, different drugs and memory specificity in relation to the FAB.